In this video, we're going to talk about Occugen, trading under the ticker symbol OCGN. We're going to cover the price action over the past few days, the company itself, and the recommendations regarding buying, holding, or selling the shares. If you would like to see more stock analysis videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. But before today's video begins, I'd just like to clarify a few things about the timing when my videos are recorded, uploaded, and how much they react to the latest market updates. Those are prepared, recorded on the day before and scheduled for the next day. If there are significant and volatile movements during the trading day, they will not be reflected in the video itself. With that being said, to the extent possible, my analysis will be based on the medium term or even the long term and not necessarily on the intraday movements. The main reason why it shouldn't matter that much is because most people investing in stocks or even just trading in and out of their positions usually keep their positions open for at least a few weeks. With that being said, if there are significant movements in the stock price that happens afterwards, either they will not affect the overall picture, so in that case we will cover them the next time we're supposed to cover them, or if they are significant enough that they change the outlooks, then yes, I will do a follow-up video in the shortest delay possible with a re-evaluation of what I think should happen next. Oxygen has been a topic of many conversations throughout the financial sector because it had a great potential to grow based on its partnership with its Indian partner. Oxygen is a company based in Malvern, Pennsylvania. It treats eye issues as well as acting as a distribution partner for other companies' products and takes care of like the relationships and applications with local regulators. There are different ways to look at what the company represents, but for now, I am pretty sure that its main selling point is the phase three tests that it's submitting and if it gets to distribute in the United States. Oxygen is currently trading at a decent premium as its market cap is $2.5 billion for an enterprise value of $1.5 billion. A good deal of that premium is probably the expectation regarding the possible distribution deal if things go well. It has a little shy of 200 million shares outstanding and it also has a decent institutional ownership chunk at 28.7% of the total flow. With that being said, I do believe that the company is positioned at a speculative play by the whales and probably as a marginal portion of their portfolios. But nevertheless, it justifies the interest people have in the company and I believe that there is a real argument to be made that a company has more than just buzz from online communities to support and justify its stock price. Occugen has a very high quick and current ratio that are actually identical at 25.13, meaning that the company has no other significant operations other than applying for phase three tests and waiting for the response from the regulators at the moment. This means that most of the company's eggs are put in this one basket. This is a potential risk to consider in owning Occugen shares because the last time people were interested about a stock with all the eggs in one basket, it was Workhorse. Its 10-day average has been close to 95 million shares a day in terms of trade volume, which is extremely bullish for the stock. Its one-year beta is 3.8, which means that it's almost four times as volatile as the rest of the market. Its 52-week high has been $18.77, and its 52-week low was just $0.27. Cents. Looking at the options market, it seems that the market participants are very careful with Occugen, which is understandable, given all the eggs are in the one basket. The strike prices are mostly focused between $12 to $15, with a moderate favor towards the calls. I think that Occugen can have an interesting run over the next couple of weeks, but it's highly dependent on the outcome of something that it doesn't really control. What this means is that its price may go through a lot of volatility over the next few months, and not always in a bullish way either. But overall, I think that if you can get in the stock with an average cost basis around $10 or $11, there's a good chance to make a profit over the medium term. I would recommend to allocate up to 1% of your 
portfolio in Arcogen and hold it for around eight weeks or so. It gives enough time for the stock price to fully blossom. And I assume that this is before the phase three results come back because you don't want to trade as the news is released. Your investment should also take into consideration the market conditions at the time and the surrounding sentiment that determine what kind of asset should be picked, for how much and for how long, and when you should be selling it. First of all, the financial market doesn't reflect the real economy. That much is a fact. If the stock market is doing great, it doesn't mean that the underlying company is necessarily hiring more people, increasing the wages, and rising the living standards of its employees. Sometimes it's even the exact opposite because the stock market is a big pool where money comes in and out, goes to different places in order to be placed. The capital may be used to be invested in a company to improve its efficiency and productivity, but it can also be used to buy up shares and assets in order to make a profit. This phenomenon is called financialization, and it means that the more money is been used for non-productive purposes like mergers and acquisitions, paying dividends to shareholders, buying back equity and so on, the less there is for the productive parts. Another way to put it is that ever since 2008, the Dow Jones index has increased its value significantly. But people don't necessarily see this growth in the main streets. This is why we should be careful with the assumptions of what rising prices mean for a company. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything, other than the fact that the asset is getting more expensive and that their yields is going down. Additionally, some new phenomenons are now palpable, and they are the creation of new bubbles, the participation and influence of retail traders in specific situations, and the anticipation of a massive recession or at least pullbacks. Bubbles have always been created over and over during the past few centuries, ever since there are financial markets. But nowadays, it's quite interesting to see that the speed at which they are created, attract people or capital, and then go bust is getting faster and faster. So almost immediately after the major collapse of the market prices back in early 2020, the same market decided to create a massive bubble of the electric vehicle sector or anything that is related to it. So almost immediately after the major collapse of the financial market back in 2020, the market then decided to one, recover any sort of price that fell during the first three months of the year, and then attract a massive amount of capital into the EV sector or anything that's related to it. Stock prices across the board, but in the growth stocks in particular, went up to the sky for a moment. And even if it didn't last long, this episode definitely allowed market participants, or many of them, to park in their money in a sector and left with either a lot of profits or at least avoiding incurring large losses because they left their money in blue chips or the sectors that are heavily affected. The involvement of retail traders in companies has also been much more pronounced in recent months. Because in the scenarios of a short squeeze, companies may have short sellers who believe that the stock will decrease in value. The short squeeze consists of buying the stock price up to force the short sellers to recover their positions which will then trigger even bigger increase in stock price. But I'm not saying that this is always rational, and I'm not even saying that companies will always have a very convincing narrative or good fundamentals. Sometimes there's none of that. A good example is with GameStop. If you play video games, ask yourself if you would really always buy your games at GameStop, knowing that you would be buying those games online as well or knowing that at least you have the capacity, the right, to buy those games online in the comfort of your home. But nevertheless, retail traders do have a much more significant influence in the stock price, for the better or worse. Personally, I think that as long as the volatility is high, 
it'll create opportunities. The final phenomenon is the anticipation of a recession. Many people are expecting something of that sort to happen ever since 2008. There were quite a few companies that were supposed to go bankrupt because of the debt structure no longer sustainable or that their business model is just bad. But somehow, that system was able to hold its ground, especially in the North American market. This is partially because the capital around the world chooses to come to American capital market when things get heated back home. This is especially the case when geopolitical tensions increase around the world. In order to make sure that the capital can provide steady returns without being affected too much by central bank policies and inflations, this phenomenon will intensify over time. The bottom line in all this is that the environment is getting more uncertain and volatile in a context where asset yields will probably remain low because the real economy cannot just improve because the asset prices go up. As far as we're concerned, that means that the patience of market participants over the next couple of years will be a great virtue and that there will be plenty of opportunities to eye for better prices. With that being said, always make sure to keep your positions diversified and your risk level under check. Your speculative positions should play a relatively modest part of your overall portfolio. So thanks for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel.